With me now from Washington is senior reporter for the Washington Post, Aaron Blake. Aaron, we just heard that word status quo or the word status quo. House Speaker Paul Ryan said the same thing yesterday about Clinton representing that. For the ma vast majority of Americans who have a negative view of Washington, will this argument work? Well, I think you're going to see a lot of it over the next couple of weeks here, the, la the last few weeks. I think this is a key part of the closing argument for the Trump campaign. Uh, they want to do whatever they can to attach Hillary Clinton to business as usual in Washington, which, as you noted, people do feel strongly uh, uh, negative towards. Uh, at the same time, Clinton is attaching herself to President Obama, who she'll campaign with later today uh, and during this campaign rather and uh, you know he's actually a pretty popular president at this point so I think it's a strategy that they certainly will pursue I think that there are limits to it even as it's something that has probably worked quite a bit for many candidates in recent years we heard Trump say that he was holding back at the debate and you wrote a story yesterday about President Clinton's marital indiscretions Bill Clinton Trump surrogate Rudy Giuliani not restraining on the issue so if this does become a line of attack for Trump who exactly is he targeting with it and does it stick well I think if they did go down this road and we've seen other Republicans make this argument including people who work for Donald Trump and people who are surrogates for him uh, basically argued that Hillary Clinton is something of an enabler of her husband's indiscretions while he was in the White House. Uh, that's the argument that they would make. It's not necessarily that uh, she should answer for her husband's misdeeds, but that she covered up for him, essentially. Uh, it's starting to creep into the conversation a little bit. Donald Trump himself has started not talking about it, but saying that he's not talking about it. So he's kind of talking about it while he's not. Um, and Rudy Giuliani certainly brought it up in a big way after the debate in a very forceful way. He said he wished Trump had brought it up during the debate. So I don't, I don't uh, rule out the fact that we might see this more and more in the weeks ahead, depending upon how Trump feels about his status in this race and depending upon how he feels he's being treated by the Clinton campaign. Yeah, I know afterwards he was saying he didn't go down that road because Chelsea Clinton was there. It'll be interesting if he does how he will sort of phrase it at that point. The New York Times has a report out today noting Trump's team plans to prepare him better for the next debate. How critical is this second debate going to be for the Trump campaign? Well, they're, they're big ones. I mean, you, you can't help but think that the debates are important. They may not move the numbers a whole lot. We're a very polarized country. It's, it's difficult to move the numbers more than a point or two, uh, no matter how convincing the debate performance is. So I don't think we're necessarily going to see this race totally change based upon this debate or any other. Uh, but this is a situation where tens of millions of people are watching. You get to make the case directly to them. You're standing on stage next to the person you're competing against. So that's really the best opportunity you have to contrast yourself with the other person. Uh, you know, there was a lot of talk going into this debate about did Donald Trump take it seriously? Did he prepare enough? I think it would be incumbent upon him to do something different last time, whether it's prepare more, whether it's switch up his preparation. Uh, but really, there was, no mis there was no mystery about this going into this debate, and he did not seem quite ready for it, uh, at least beyond the first half an hour where he actually did pretty decently, I thought. If you can put a sports metaphor, it was almost like boxers in a ring. They got to feel each other out for the first debate and then we move on to the second and see what they really have there also. Uh, right. Cl Clinton is campaigning with Bernie Sanders today. Those millions of voters who were Team Sanders during the primary, especially those young voters, how important is it for her to secure those votes? Well, it's super important. Uh, we always talk about the young vote, and it's, all ki it's often kind of uh, you know, overblown as far as how important it is. It's a demographic that certainly doesn't turn out to vote as much as other demographics. Uh, but there are a few interesting things about this election that make it especially pivotal. Uh, one is that uh, young people don't especially like Hillary Clinton. So they're very left-leaning, uh, but they don't like Clinton. The other is that they're much more open to voting for third-party candidates. We see polls right now where a lot of them are going for Gary Johnson, a lot of them are going for Jill Stein, and that's really cutting into Hillary Clinton's performance among this group. Uh, what that means going forward is if she's able to actually turn them out, if they don't vote for those third-party candidates, which uh, third-party candidates tend to fade towards the end of a race, if she can actually get those millennials to come out and vote for her, that's going to be a big boost for her relative to what we see at the polls today. Uh, but if she doesn't appeal to them, if she can't get them out to vote, if she does lose them to the third-party candidates, that's a major problem for her as far as putting this election away.
And she also has Michelle Obama on the campaign trail today. Who is uh, the first lady appealing to right now? Well, I think a lot of uh, middle of the road voters, certainly. Uh, Bernie Sanders is a, a highly popular person in America right now, if you look at the polls. Uh, the second most popular person, or maybe tied with Bernie Sanders right now, as far as national political figures, is Michelle Obama. She's very well liked, uh, with the exception maybe of the Republican base. And I think that uh, swing voters are going to look at both her and even to an extent Bernie Sanders as good surrogates for Hillary Clinton, the kind of character witnesses that Hillary Clinton really wants to have during this campaign. Aaron Blake in Washington. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you.